Hello everyone and welcome back to a new video on my channel. In this video I would like to talk about the best astrophotography setup that you can use if you're planning to get started into the hobby of astrophotography. I've been doing this hobby for a few years now and have used multiple astrophotography setups for this hobby and I'm still using right now three or four different astrophotography setups and it is not that easy to find the perfect astrophotography setup for getting started and in the beginning I had a lot of problems with building up and set up that is good for me if you're planning to get started into astrophotography. So in the beginning I started with a big telescope and it was very complicated for me to get started with and I had a lot of problems in the beginning. So in this video I would like to share the best astrophotography setup that you can use if you're planning to get started into the hobby of astrophotography. So this is the setup that I would recommend. So in this video I would like to talk about why I've decided to put this equipment together in order to share that with you as the best setup that you can use for getting started in the hobby of astrophotography. I would like to talk about different aspects, why I've put together this equipment like this, and I would like to talk about different aspects that you have to consider when getting started into the hobby of astrophotography. So if you're new to this hobby, this video will be super interesting and definitely helpful for you if you're looking to get started and you're not sure which setup or which equipment is best for you. But before starting with this video, I would like to mention that this video is not sponsored, I'm not being paid for it, and all products shown in this video were purchased by myself. But now, let's get started. So I started into the hobby of astrophotography four years ago, and I've used multiple equipment over the last few years, and there's definitely a difference between each single astrophotography setup. And therefore, I put together the perfect astrophotography setup for beginners. So if you're new to astrophotography, this is the setup I would recommend. But now let's get started by introducing the entire setup. So first of all, I'm using a tripod. So you can use a lot of different tripods. So in this case, I'm not planning to talk about specific tripods because the only important aspect is that your tripod has a lot of stability because it can be very challenging when your tripod is moving all the time because then you will not achieve round stars in the image and that's what we plan to achieve and therefore definitely try to go for a tripod that has a lot of stability. So the iOptron SkyGuider Pro is a star tracker and a few years ago I started with the HDQ5 Pro GOAT mount which is an amazing mount for astrophotography but it's very very heavy. In the beginning it was quite challenging for me to uh, do the polar alignment process with the HEQ5 Pro go to mount because it was so heavy but still it's a very good mount. But in this case I'm planning to use a very portable star tracker so it's not that heavy and that is an aspect that is super super important in the beginning because it is in the beginning, especially in the beginning, you are practicing all the time and therefore you just set up your telescope capture a few images and then the next night you set up your equipment once again and you just capture a few hours so that that's what astrophotography is all about. You have to practice and this equipment is uh, is very portable and therefore you can use that astrophotography setup even in short astrophotography nights. Back then when I started with the HEQ5 Pro go to mount it was so heavy that I only uh, set up my entire equipment when there were clear skies all night long. But this one is so portable that you can use it just for a few hours and that's super important, especially when planning to get started into the hobby of astrophotography. At the back I'm using the Canon EOS 2000D. This is a camera that I've bought five years ago and I've captured one of the best images with this DSLR camera and there's a reason for that. The Canon EOS 2000D has less noise compared to other older DSLR cameras. So it's a quite new camera and it has less noise, which is super important in astrophotography. So this camera might be quite expensive, especially when planning to get started into the hobby of astrophotography. So if this camera is too expensive for you, I can re recommend buying the Canon EOS 600D as well. So both cameras are quite good. If you have enough money, I would rather go for the 2000D but if that one is too expensive for you, just go for the Canon EOS 600D. At the front, I've attached the Canon 75 to 300mm lens. So this is, in my opinion, one of the best lenses to get started into the hobby of astrophotography because it's not that heavy, it's very affordable and it performs quite good in astrophotography when not using the maximum aperture of this lens. So 
this lens has a focal length between 75 all the way up to 300 millimeters, which is a great range for astrophotography because you can capture these wide field images of the night sky, but on the other side, you can as well go for those smaller objects. For sure, when plan you capture smaller galaxies, a telescope is better, but there are definitely a few galaxies that you can capture with this lens as well, such as the Triangulum Galaxy or the Andromeda Galaxy. So there are definitely a lot of objects that you can capture with this equipment. So this is actually everything I've planned to mention so far about this deep sky astrophotography setup. So later on, I would like to capture the night sky with this equipment to show you that you can capture amazing images even with an affordable astrophotography setup. So tomorrow I would like to go through the different light frames I've captured and share the images with you and talk a bit about um, the lens, the entire setup, and I would like to talk a bit about um, a few tips when using this astrophotography setup because there are definitely a few tips. So for example, when using this lens, I do not recommend to use this lens wide open. So you can use this lens wide open at f4.0, I guess, but when using this lens wide open, you do have a lot of chromatic aberration and the stars don't look that good in the edges. Therefore, I usually recommend to stop down the lens a bit. So f5.0, f6.3, so it's something in that range because that helps you achieve better images in astrophotography because your stars will be looking better in the end. Another aspect I would like to talk about is the focal length. So I've used this lens multiple times with different focal length over the past few years and I've taken different test images and realized that this lens performs the best when using a focal length between 75 all the way up to 135 millimeters when using it for astrophotography. Because when using a longer focal length, these stars will be bigger and bigger and bigger. For sure, you can remove that in post-processing, but especially in the beginning, uh, post-processing and editing your images will be quite challenging. Therefore, just use a focal length in that range because that will help you to achieve better images. So much said about this equipment. This is everything I've planned to mention so far. So we have to do a pole alignment process later on, and then we can take a close look at the images I've captured. Last night, I was able to capture a few images of the North American Nebula. This mount tracks the stars precisely and reliable, allowing for long exposure images without getting star trails in the end. In this case, I have used a single exposure time of one minute, but you can even use a longer exposure time without getting star trails in the end. When collecting a longer exposure time, for sure the image will be better. That's why I decided to share this image with you. For capturing this image of the Pleiades star cluster, I've used a different tracking mount, but the camera was the Canon EOS 600D in combination with the 75 to 300 mm lens. You can definitely see that this combination is capable of capturing amazing images of deep scale objects. It's truly amazing what kind of results can be achieved with affordable equipment. As always, it's important for me to point out that in astrophotography, it's not always the equipment that matters most, it's also the total exposure time. You can use very expensive equipment, but if your total exposure time is very short, the results will not be that good in the end. On the other side, it also means that you can achieve amazing images of deep sky objects with affordable equipment if you manage to collect a longer exposure time. Normally, I'm using a bigger telescope for astrophotography, but sometimes I'm still using the equipment shown in this video, as it's very easy to use and still allows me to capture amazing images of the night sky. That's why I really like to use this setup for astrophotography. It's affordable, portable and easy to use. Exactly the aspects a beginner astrophotography setup should have. For that reason, I highly recommend this equipment to beginners. If you have any further questions about this equipment, or if you have any general questions about astrophotography, definitely feel free to ask me down below in the comments and I will definitely help you. If you would like to further support me, you can now become a member of my channel. If this video was interesting and helpful to you, I would really really appreciate a like and a subscription. Otherwise, thank you so so much for watching and until next time, clear skies, Felix.